Hello, welcome to FGSO Woodworks. What we're doing today is we have traveled out to uh, a place in Pennsylvania that we are going to be uh, picking up a china hutch for some refinishing work that we need to do. Um, let me show you what we're working with here. What we're going to be doing is uh, we've had a little bit of gnawing from uh, the pets, and so we're going to be replacing this material here. And then there are also places that you can see what we have is we have bleed through from uh, knots that uh, apparently there was not any uh, stain blocker put on. So we're going to be stripping this area down these areas that need it and putting stain blocker on and then repainting over it with the same paint that is on it now. Um, that's one of the jobs that we have to do. The second one is we have a table of foot that has also been gnawed on and so we're going to remove this and we're actually going to replace it with one that we fabricate in the shop. So we'll go ahead and get to work and I will be back with you when we're getting ready to leave. Okay, so we have a we have the table foot that we're going to be taking off and what we have here are a couple of uh, screws that are Allen wrench. Um, yes, that's right. So we'll go ahead and uh, take the leg off. take this piece back to the shop and we're going to reproduce this piece. Um, although I might, I think I'll save you a little bit. Um, because I can, being that this is being painted, I could use a wood filler on this that's easy to paint. Um, it would save from, I mean it's not that much of a we're talking about. 10 bucks or whatever. The difference is that I could um, fix this rather than uh, reproduce it. Because I mean, it's other than that space here, yeah, it's really in good shape. So, but it's up to you. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah, I'll make sure that the resource. Okay. So, we'll get everything taken care of then. Alright, so we've returned back to the shop and <clears throat> we've brought the china cabinet in. Um, show the china cabinet a little bit. One of the first things that we're going to do before we do anything else is we want to make sure that we wash this down. Um, just regular soap and water. I prefer using Dawn. Uh, it's going to get rid of the. It's going to get rid of all the the oils and stuff that may be on the top before we scuff the surface. 
So we're actually being tasked to not only repair what's down here, but we're also going to, and, and fix these areas that are bled through, we're also going to repaint this top. We're just going to scuff it up and apply new paint on the top of it. Uh, if you notice, um, you can come over to me a little bit. If you notice on this tabletop, if you could just focus in on this tabletop a little bit, you can see that there are marks all over it where it looks like, it, it almost looks like there was only one coat of finish put on, or one coat of paint that was put on here. And it's really, it just really does not look good. And it looks like there might have been micro bubbles in the paint. So that's where all these little dots are coming from. Okay, and uh, so we have the top to do, the piece on the bottom to do, and as I showed earlier when we were at the client's house, there are some areas where there's a knot or some sort of uh, blemish that's behind all of this and it kept some of the resins, the oils and stuff from the tree itself in here and it's actually bled through the paint itself. That usually comes from either no primer being put on at all or they did not use any kind of a stain blocker to get rid of, to, to make sure that you didn't have bleed through. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of scuff this area back up, sand it down a little bit till we get, you know, to a good point. And then we're going to add stain blocker and then we will recoat the doors. Um, so one of the first things that we do, like I said, is we're going to clean this first. Once it's been cleaned, then we're going to go through and disassemble some things that need disassembly. Uh, the doors... You know, I'm not going to do the stuff on the doors as they are. I'm going to have to remove these doors. Um, that way I can go through, lay the stuff down, and go ahead and refinish those parts. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. Hey. So we're going to repeat? Well, we've done the top already. Okay. Continue on the sides and the face. Actually, I think we'll do the top just as making sure that we've. Yeah. You really push the hell out of it. Yeah, those things are really starting to show up. Go ahead and wipe, wipe that off. And while you're doing that, I'll start down here at this end. Okay. and cleaned everything with soap and water and as you can see I'm gonna get in real close here you can see all these little dots and that's why we're gonna do it the other thing is, is I believe this was done when the table was made and painted is that they were trying to give it a little bit of an antique look so they went by and just kind of scratched these areas 
The only problem is, is that they're too deep. Like they were never feathered out. Like it was worn. It was supposed to look like it was worn, but it, but it doesn't. It's just, it looks really terrible. Like somebody just came by and ran their fingernail against it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do like I've already started here, is we're going to go and feather these out and we're going to end up painting over them because she decided that she didn't want these. So we're going to paint them over. But we did need to feather them out. That way you don't have a noticeable um, place when we put the new paint on that didn't have anything on it. So we just want to go and feather these out first. One of the other things that I'm doing is I'm going to use this as a teaching tool on what to do when you're sanding. Mm -hmm. And we're going to assume that the people do not have a uh, uh, orbital sander or a, you know, a power sander or something like that. Okay. okay. Yep. So now, now that those parts are done, we're going to come back with this. And I'll okay. show you what I'm doing. That way you can come back and do it. Okay. Now, put the full thing on it. Don't put a whole lot of pressure on it. Okay. okay. Very light pressure. Like you're like you're laying your hand on the table. Yeah. It's basically the weight of your hands. You want to do that on this. And you want to roll it. Around the corner. With it. The reason that we're not putting a whole lot of pressure on it is we're not trying to remove the paint. Alright? Okay. You see how this one is and how this one is. Go ahead and feel those. Yeah. Okay. Smooth. See how they're nice and smooth? This will move a little bit more. It's actually smoother than the... Uh... Yeah, and we're going to do that with... We're going to do that with this tabletop. We're going to make sure that it's as smooth as can be. Okay. And I'm using all of the all of the pad. Right. So it's forced to be level. Yeah. Okay. See now that's this is how I can tell there wasn't a whole lot of paint put on this thing in the first place. Right off. Okay. So this this, this is done just mine at the end there. Yeah, that one and those two. That what about there. the corner? Um, don't worry about the corner because okay. you did enough with the green scratch pad. Okay, now that we have all these edges that are sanded on the top, what we're going to do is we're actually going to work directly on the top. Um, we're going to start off 
with these pieces of scratch pads and then we're just going to go over the area and we're scuffing up we're not trying to remove a whole lot of paint you can see that it's coming off some and it's roughing it up so that we can actually apply more paint to So now that we've scuffed up the tabletop, uh, we're going to work on the doors. First thing we need to do is remove all the hardware from the doors. Um, as I'm looking through, there's not really any place, any reason why I would have to remove the hinges from the doors in order to get to where I can paint. So here's what we're looking at. <clears throat> now this one didn't happen to bleed through, but it goes to show you that sometimes when furniture makers uh, are making multiple pieces at the same time, you know, kind of mass produced, what it does is there are some things that get overlooked. There's a knot that's right here, and this knot goes all the way to here and you can see it because it's got a crack that runs across here. What they never did is they never stabilized this piece with um, either you know super glue or uh, they didn't use um, wood putty to fill in this area so that the crack um, didn't show up and so that's what we're looking at here. So I'm going to have to fix that part too. Here's where the bleeding comes through. Hold that. 
and you can see where the knot is because there's also a crack that's here. Now I don't want to have to do a whole lot to it, but it's got to look right. So there might be some areas that I just I'm gonna have to check with. Back to it.